What is the law of God? What are the Ten Commandments? And what do we need to know about God's law as followers of Jesus? By the end of this teaching, you will know everything you need to know about the law of God, and specifically the Ten Commandments. Exodus 24, 12 says, The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you, so whatever Moses is about to receive is directly from the hand of God, the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I've written for their instruction. So see, instruction is the purpose of the commandment and law that God is giving to Moses on these tablets of stone. God's law is his perfect spiritual standard expressed in over 600 different commands. God's law includes the Ten Commandments, but is not limited to these ten. See, God's law for his people, specifically the nation of Israel, is revealed in the first five books of the Old Testament that we refer to as the Torah. There are a few things you need to know about God's law that will be really helpful as followers of Jesus. Number one, God's law reveals his character, his ways, his heart. In other words, his instruction and commands is a revelation of who he is to his people. Romans chapter 7 tells us that the law is good and it is holy. Romans 7 and Romans 2 also tells us that the law of God is a spiritual standard that is fulfilled spiritually. Also, the law of God was purposed to show Israel how to live as God's chosen nation and people, according to Psalm 119. But the law of God also convicts criminals and therefore enforces the penalty of death for those who violate the law. We see this in Hebrews 10, James 2, Romans 4. And also we need to understand that of these 613 commands, this whole law of God can actually be separated into three primary helpful categories. The moral law of God, the ceremonial or ritual law of God, and the civil law of God. Each of these can be helpful ways of categorizing the different commandments we see in the law. We see this in Ephesians 2, Colossians 2, and Romans 14. Also, the law of God cannot, never can justify us in the sight of God, according to Galatians 5 and Galatians 3. The law of God actually exposes our sin, our helplessness, and our imperfection, according to Romans 3 and 1 Timothy 1. Also, the law of God is fulfilled by Jesus as our perfect human representative. As the one who lives perfectly in our place, he follows the law of God to a T. Romans chapter 10, Romans 8, and Matthew 5 tell us that Jesus lived perfectly and fulfilled the law on our behalf. Also, there is a physical dimension to the law of God and a spiritual dimension. We refer to the physical dimension as the letter and the spiritual dimension as the spirit or the heart of the law. Hebrews 10, Romans 7, and 2 Corinthians 3 speak to this. The law of God also is primarily about love. The law of God shows us how to properly and appropriately love God and love people. If you want to know what it looks like to live as the fullest best human being possible, uh, with the most abundant life, loving God to the fullest degree and loving people in the best way, the law of God reveals to us how to love properly and what love actually looks like. The law of God also points us to Jesus as our salvation. He's our righteousness and God's salvation. And the law of God simply points us to him and renders us helpless and incapable of saving ourselves. Hebrews 7 and Galatians chapter 3 tells us this. Also, the law of God places people under a curse because of sin. Galatians 3 and Galatians 4 speak to this, that we are placed under the curse of death and the penalty of separation from God. That's enforced by the law because of our sin. And the law of God is actually something we can die to or come out from in order to be free from the curse that the law enforces. Galatians 2 and Romans 7 teaches this. And the law of God cannot give us eternal life and restore us back to God. It is incapable of doing that. That is not the purpose of the law and the commandments. So what are the Ten Commandments as revealed in the Old Testament? According to Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17, here are the Ten Commandments, if you didn't know. Number one, you shall worship no other God besides the one true living God. Number two, you shall not make idols for yourself in the image of anything. Number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, which means to falsely represent him or to misrepresent him in any kind of way as image bearers who carry his name. Specifically, the nation of Israel had a unique set of circumstances and opportunity to reveal God to the nation, so they had this really opportunity to misrepresent God and take his name in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Number five, honor your father and your mother. Number six, you shall not murder. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. These are not suggestions, by the way. You shall not steal, number eight. And number nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And the last one, you shall not covet. This is God's law. And God's law cannot be reduced down to any one of these purposes individually. But rather, all these things about the law of God uh, are, is something that we should know. The law of God, the purpose behind the law, why God gives the law, is revealed in all of these different points. So this is the law of God. If you want the scriptures and the notes for this teaching, you can find those in the full free course for new believers on our website under session five, what is God's law? Make sure to review the scriptures and the notes before the next session. And please do share this with anyone who might benefit from this foundations course. And visit AboveReproachMinistry.com for everything about this online ministry. And I will see you in the next video where we address the question, who is Jesus?